Well, hello again, my friends. It's Carpo. Happy holidays. It's only about a week from Christmas. And every year this day comes, this season comes. Uh, it's renewal. You know, the new year comes on. And uh, my wife and I actually met during New Year's of 1998. And that's when we've been together pretty much ever since. So uh, it'll be our 21st uh, non-technical anniversary, I guess. I'm standing here in front of my Christmas tree. It's a beautiful Christmas tree that we picked out from the lot. I thought it would make a good spot. I've got good lighting. And uh, just share it. I guess it would be kind of a tip or a trick or some advice that I've learned in my life. And I didn't intend on making this video, so it's kind of off the top of my head. And uh, all of us have moments where shit gets real. <laughs> the day gets fucked up. We have a bad moment. We argue with somebody, or we fall down the stairs, or our kids get hurt. Anything could possibly happen. And we never know when it's coming, but it does. And in these times, it's really important to be prepared. My, I was speaking with somebody the other day. Oh, we went to get the firewood. I actually, I did upload the video of the blown tire. Well, we're cruising down the, you know, the freeway with the trailer, little trailer with like a thousand pounds and it blows a tire. So... Our natural first thought is, oh shit, how do, how do we handle it? So we calmly drive up to the place, figure out how to replace the tire and deal with it. Some people aren't very good with situations or emergencies. But here's the main point. When it's all said and done, how you perceive it and look back on that event is completely up to you. It's not up to anyone else. It has nothing to do with the actual situation. And it's called, in my world, it's called mental alchemy. People call it perspective, <laughs> you know, um, you know, your, uh, th or thinking positive, but it's not thinking positive. It really is perspective, though. It's a way of looking at things from a different angle, from the many facets, and saying, okay, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. So, in other words, in our situation, all, we were all very positive about it. We're like, hey, we get more time to hang out, more time to chat, talk about life while we're waiting for the tires, and, um, so this was one example of how an event could have gone down. It could have gone the opposite way. It could have been with people who would freak out. And I remember who I was with, she was saying her mom would have freaked out and panicked and been like all stressed out about it. And I know a lot of people are like that. So when you're in this situation, it's one thing. There's actually, to panic, there's actually a book called, uh, I read, I listened to the audio book. It's called uh, Deep Survival. It was really good. It was about a guy who was in the military and he talked about how people panic under duress and stress and uh, even breathe water in when they're deep underwater because their respirators give out, things like that. Your natural instinct and tendency to panic, fight or flight, and how you can learn to harness that. So learning to harness the moment and handling it is one thing, but afterwards, no matter what happens, you're going to have to look back on this event that happened in your life one way or another. And you can look at it as positive or negative depending, those words really don't mean much. As soon as I said positive, um, I realize we give those attributions to things. So even a negative event can have a positive outcome. And um, so this time of year, you know, uh, when a lot of people are worried about the holidays and whatnot, or a lot of us guys who wait to the last minute to get the final stuff done, um, just reminding ourselves that it, it, everything works out in the end. You know, and if it doesn't, well, you can at least make an effort to make sure it doesn't, I don't know how to define what I'm getting at, but this book I actually uh, grabbed just before I made the video, The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. And um, this is a very large book and it gets into some very deep subjects relating to ancient mythology and scriptures and a variety of other things. But it's not necessarily the book I wanted to share as much as the teachings of Manly P. Hall and what they brought to my life. This was back in about, I want to say about 2012 when I discovered Manly Hall. It could have been 2013. I think a lot of the writings I have are from 13, but let's just say it was about seven years ago at least, seven or eight years ago. And um, I listened to a lecture by Manly P. Hall and it was pretty dry and boring. The recordings are horrible because they're old. Um, but I, I got interested, and so I downloaded a torrent file, which was basically the entire Manly P. Hall collection, all of his recordings on an archive. 
and I've been I went through and listened to them on my little MP3 player, whatever I had at the time, um, <clears throat> about you know seven eight years ago when I was at work when I was working in uh, carpentry and I was working by myself a lot doing finished work and. Uh, building things. So I put my headphones on in the morning, turn on Manly Hall, and when I ran out of his lectures, I went on to the Great Courses series, which I also downloaded, and I had a whole collection of different philosophies from different people, everybody from Nietzsche to... I mean, I, it's impossible to really understand all these things. Even if you've listened to them all like three or four times, you don't really get a full grasp on the immense scope of philosophy that is out there. And so this is why I kind of scoff and laugh at the, um, you know, the uh, intellectual types who think that they have, oh, well, I understand Faust, and oh, well, yes, I understand exactly what this guy meant. Nobody really is in the mind of anybody else. Half these philosophers were lunatics, lost their minds in their lives at some time. If they didn't, they probably didn't come up with a good philosophy, because there's a little bit of madness involved in thinking, a little bit of madness involved in art and music. So we all go through these moments where we kind of lose it, those are growing points as well, but I digress. My point being that uh, if you haven't heard of Manly P. Hall and you can get through an hour, I mean, if, I guess if you're interested, it would be difficult because he talks about everything from the myths of Atlantis to social psychology to the you know root meanings of holidays or religions, and he gets very involved. This guy has more of a, a rep than anybody I've ever listened to as far as the vast wide scope of information that he shared. But the main point of sharing his thoughts is the one thing, the one thing that sticks out to me, the one thing that overrides every other aspect, every single other teaching or lesson, because I don't agree with everything I've heard from him, of course. But the one thing that stands out is mental alchemy. And he described that in such detail how all of the philosophers and wise men of the past were out there seeking to find this philosopher's stone, which was back when I was in my kind of occult knowledge days. I wore this little, when I made my most watched video on YouTube, which is on my other channel, uh, it was a Kratom video, it was called My Testimonial of a Longtime User. I got so much hate for that because I was wearing a science, uh, uh, whatever it is, it's like a doctor's smock, but it's a science smock, and I bought it for the science march, for the mar climate march, or whatever it was years ago. Anyhow, a lot of people took it the wrong way, saying, oh, anybody wearing a, a smock must be pretending they're a doctor, and uh, it gave me kind of a perspective into, you know, uh, how upset people can be about things. But anyhow, I, making that video, um, I completely fucking forgot what I was going to talk about. It had to do with the video, and I was going to connect that. There was a point to it, and it had to do with mental alchemy, or... Man, anyway, well, that's weird. I don't do that very often, but I'm not going to cut it out, because that's real life. We forget shit. We fuck shit up. Um, I, there was a time when I actually went and listened to a ton of Manly P. Hall's lectures, and I have a little book with all of the different lectures written down inside, and the actual minutes, because they could be a few hours long. Uh, the period of time highlighted where, like, the, okay, this is where he talks about this, this is important. And my intention, long term, was to go back on my YouTube channel and to make an edited version that had all the spliced in tidbits of the hundreds and hundreds of hours, if not more, of lectures I've listened to. And the little tidbits that were the most important. But, I remembered now, I knew I would. The smock I was wearing in that video, the Kratom video, had a triangle. It's what I got the most hate for. It was a circle with a triangle and a square in it. It's the Philosopher's Stone. It symbolizes the search for the Philosopher's Stone. But during my occult days, I had so many people who thought it was some satanic or Freemason or Illuminati symbol, New World Order, and I just, I have to roll my eyes and all that, because it's like, okay, look, symbols predate any bullshit Freemason New World Order crap. You know, Illuminati bullshit from the Bavarian Illuminati. And uh, symbols go way back. And many of these symbols, if you can break them down, they can teach you valuable lessons about what the person was trying to convey. Even a circle within a square, or vice versa. I shouldn't go into detail on this because it'll turn into a long video. Um, what I really wanted to say was, of all the lessons he taught, mental alchemy was the most important. 
and the alchemical search for that philosopher's stone was so important to so many people. Scientists killed themselves with mercury and lead, trying to find gold, figure out how to turn lead to gold. But in the end, many discovered. The whole idea was to teach you humility in order to change the parts of your life that suck into gold, to turn the bad moments into gold. In other words, why would anybody want gold? What is the, any reason a person would want to make gold out of lead? We know it would flood the market. It's only for personal gain, short term. Long term, everyone else would suffer. You think it through rationally. Think, okay, what if I could turn lead into gold? Well, you'd ruin the market yourself. And it's one of those ideas that you think, wait a minute, maybe I already have the gold. Maybe my family, my, my holidays, and my, a window, and firewood outside, and um, all the amazing things that the humans that have come before me have brought. You may have heard the saying, of, on the shoulders of giants. Um, and basically what that means is everything we've created and everything we have today was built on somebody else's ideas, another foundation, a scaffold for us to build on. And we all owe that to one another and understanding that it's all perspective. Where we think we should be in our lives, what we think we should be doing, what job should we have, what should we, you know, really put our energy towards, what should we care about, what should we fight for, all of these things. We're going to make mistakes. Sometimes it feels right and we know we're doing the right thing. And in retrospect, you're just like, fuck, why did I do that? It's okay. It's not about, and that's the mental alchemy part, it's not about looking at the failures, it's about saying the failures will build something greater. Even all the time I've spent being lazy in my life has taught me how unvaluable lazy time is, uh, or rather how debilitating it can be. Or the times when I was depressed, it taught me, don't fall into your depression. It's easy to just sit and be sad. That's bullshit. Pull yourself out of it, force yourself to go on a walk, force yourself to watch something positive. Too many people don't, and they like to wallow in their misery, and then they talk about how hard it is to get out. It's not always a chemical imbalance. Sometimes we love to wallow in our own pity, and it's all about changing your mind. And don't take that offensively if you're a person who has chronic depression or some sort of a, you know, an issue with, uh, well, I can't say chemical imbalance because that's not really, uh, that's one of those uh, made-up pharmaceutical terms. But I'm bringing the pharmaceutical industry in to say that they have for too long have told us there's something wrong with us because of the way we perceive things, because of the way we think about our lives. And we find out a lot of the pharmaceuticals people are, people are taking are causing them to forget their lives, to not process the past, to not really understand and grieve properly, or to uh, motivate properly to fight for something, or to fight against something, and um, basically make people complacent. And uh, a complacent society is not a productive society, unless it's productive for the, you know, the few. But, God, I'm getting off topic, aren't I? Anyhow, it's all about from here to here. Mental alchemy, think positive, look at things differently. Nobody's going to do it for you. It's the number one lesson I've learned. And when I first started this video, my thought was this. It was like, how do I make a metaphor for this? Like, it's something I think about all the time that affects my life constantly, but I don't talk about it much on YouTube at all. But it's something I think about all the time. And I realized, you know, it's kind of like when the first time you do tie-dye. Have you ever tie-dyed? clothes or sheets or socks or anything. Maybe the first time you do tie-dye, you're really excited because it's fun. It's beautiful. It's easy. You're like, wow, I can do this. And you start asking your friends, have you done this? Start talking with people about it. After a while, it fades. And you're like, eh, you don't do it for a long time. It's the same way I see learning these tools of life. When you learn something, you want to share it with others. But often people just don't care. They're not interested. Ah, oh, whatever. Mental alchemy. And so you're like, Okay, fine. Y'all just go on thinking like, you know, life sucks and, and setting yourselves up for failure. Because we all go through bullshit. Man, I have so many ups and downs. It's really about hanging on to those ups. You fucking hang on as long as you can and make the most of it. And when you're in the downs, you make sure you're climbing out of that fucking pit as fast as you can. Because the downs are necessary, but we don't have to immerse ourselves in there and wallow around in a swamp. So, be well. Remember, that it's just another holiday. It's just another event, uh, or it's just another loss, or just another gain. Whatever your situation may be in life, whatever problems that may be causing you grief, take a deep breath 
and know we're all in it together. I really wish that there was some sort of a support group, a way that people could not just share our thoughts with others, but share them with other people who understand our particular predicament. Almost like a, uh, it's hard to counsel people because of all the regulations and stipulations in place, of course, you can't just go out and be a counselor or, you know, <laughs> you've got to get yourself a bachelor's degree in, in psychology or something, right? No. The main thing is connecting to people with a, on a certain level and finding people who are at the same level that you're at, not no higher or lower than others. And that's what I'm trying to do in a lot of these videos, is connect with people who are just at the point in their life where they need to hear this particular message. And so I'm reiterating my old thoughts in hopes of kind of renewing and rekindling a conversation about that idea of the Philosopher's Stone, turning lead to gold. Be well, my friends. Peace. Talk to you all soon. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Thanks to my subs, my patrons, my commenters, everybody in the world that gives a shit about each other. Peace.